In 2012, Martine Levitt, a finalist for the National Book Award, captivated readers with her young adult novel, My Book of Life by Angel, written in free verse. Levitt's fearless stylistic approach contrasts powerfully with the novel's harrowing subject matter, the harsh realities faced by a teenager fighting to survive on the streets of Vancouver. While the descriptions of Angel's life aren't explicit, they hint at a disturbing daily routine of brutality that cannot be easily ignored. What makes the story even more compelling is its basis in reality, as Levitt reveals in an author's note at the end of the book. The narrative unfolds after 16-year-old Angel tragically loses her mother to an undetected heart condition. Overwhelmed by depression, she seeks solace at the mall, where she creates a semblance of a home, pretending that the food court is her kitchen and the shoe store is her closet. However, Angel's life takes a dark turn when she shoplifts a pair of shoes from the closet and faces the prospect of being caught by mall security. In her moment of vulnerability, Call, a predatory man, intervenes to rescue her. Offering her a free meal and sympathy, Call introduces Angel to his special candy, a poetic reference to crack cocaine. As Call insidiously embeds himself into Angel's life, providing her with more of the addictive substance and professing his love, he reveals his true nature as a manipulative sociopath. Disguised as a businessman in his office attire, he constantly seeks out vulnerable girls like Angel, viewing them as nothing more than renewable resources. Angel's widowed father finds himself at a loss, grappling with his daughter's newfound involvement in shoplifting, drug use, and a toxic relationship with a despicable individual whom she believes she loves. Levitt's My Book of Life by Angel weaves a gripping narrative that exposes the stark realities of a young girl's struggles. Through poetic prose, Levitt captures the heartache, despair, and exploitation faced by Angel, drawing inspiration from real-life stories. The novel serves as a haunting reminder of the unseen dangers lurking within society and explores the complexities of a father's despair as he watches his daughter spiral into a world of darkness. Determined for a change, he takes a stand, but unfortunately, this only leads Angel to move into Call's disreputable apartment, where she continues her addiction to candy. Gradually, Call's charming words transform into demands for favors. Would Angel be willing to engage with some of his acquaintances to help him acquire more money for his vice? As Angel reluctantly complies, she comes to a stark realization, she has become something unspeakable, a label her father would never tolerate within their home. To ensure that Angel doesn't dare entertain the thought of escape, Call subtly hints at the potential harm he could bring upon her younger brother, Jeremy, displaying a stuffed blue rhino that belongs to him. Angel's life now revolves around a variety of Johns, as Call cajoles and then threatens her into becoming a prostitute on the notorious Vancouver streets near Hastings and Maine, a spot nicknamed the Kitty Stroll, because of the underage girls forced into sex work there. One of the individuals Angel encounters is referred to as John the John, a divorced professor who requests that Angel read Book 9 of Milton's Paradise Lost while engaging in sexual activities. Throughout the novel, excerpts from this literary work resurface, leaving a profound impact on Angel due to the power of the words. There is a chilling rumor circulating among the girls in the area about a particularly sinister man, known as Mr. P, who drives a van with tinted windows. It is whispered on the streets that once girls enter that van, they never return, an alarming reality that the indifferent police seem to disregard. As Martine Levitt explains in her author's note, Mr. P is based on the real-life serial killer Robert Picton, responsible for the tragic deaths of 49 women in Vancouver's downtown Eastside during the 1980s and 1990s. Amidst this dark environment, Angel forms a bond with Serena, who teaches her survival skills and encourages her to write about her life after Angel shares her knowledge of Milton's poetry. However, one day, Serena vanishes without a trace, leaving Angel to wonder if Mr. P is behind her disappearance. Shaken by this unsettling event, Angel takes stock of her life and makes a decision, she will break free from the grip of Call's addictive candy and strive to return home, embarking on a courageous journey of self-redemption. Facing the challenging task of quitting cold turkey, Angel endures excruciating withdrawal symptoms. Undeterred, she honors her absent friend by purchasing a notebook titled My Book of Life by Angel and pours her heart onto its pages documenting her own journey. To symbolize her newfound hope and determination, Angel gets a tattoo of angel wings adorning her back. Sensing Angel's desire for escape, 
Call intensifies his manipulation tactics by introducing a mute 11-year-old girl named Melly into their home. Described as the kid from a place called Group House, Call expects Angel to train Melly in the ways of their trade. Horrified by the situation, Angel goes to great lengths to shield Melly from the grim realities, hiding her from potential clients. Angel takes on twice the workload each night, striving to earn the money expected from both girls. Meanwhile, other street women, including an unnamed woman known as Widow, watch over Melly, doing their best to protect her until tragedy strikes when Widow is brutally attacked. Desperate for an escape, Angel hatches a daring plan. She seeks assistance from one of her clients, a police officer, to help return Melly to her original home. The outcome of Angel's escape plan is left uncertain. While the novel concludes with Angel free from Call's clutches, the reader is left wondering if she will fall victim to Mr. P's kidnapping or manage to reunite with her father at home. In the author's note that follows, Levitt sheds light on the chilling history of Robert Picton, a serial killer who evaded capture for so long due to the police's disbelief in the testimony of a survivor. The novel delves into the unsettling world of Angel's struggle for freedom, leaving readers with a mix of hope and uncertainty as they contemplate the challenges she still faces beyond the book's final pages. Because she was a prostitute, her story of being handcuffed and stabbed went ignored, eventually, the remains of all of Picton's victims were found on his farm property. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.